This is a tutorial video for the half equations which come up as part of the electrolysis topic in Unit 4 of AQA GCC Chemistry and Combined Science. Lots of people find half equations a bit scary, but they're actually pretty simple once you understand what's going on. If you look in the description below, you'll also find a link to a worksheet that you can complete as you go through the video. By the end of this video, you should be able to recall what is meant by electrolysis, construct half equations for the discharge of cations, including hydrogen, which is the only tricky one, and construct half equations for the discharge of anions, including hydroxide, which is also a little bit tricky. Electrolysis is the process in which ionic compounds are split apart into their elements using direct current electricity. The ionic compound needs to be either melted or dissolved in order to overcome the strong electrostatic force of attraction between the ions, allowing them to move. We call the liquid formed an electrolyte, and it's made of positive ions, which we call cations, and negative ions called anions. There will always be a cation and an anion from the ionic compound that we're electrolyzing, but if the electrolyte is a solution rather than a melt, then the electrolyte will also contain hydrogen and hydroxide ions from the water. These cations and anions move in response to charge towards the electrodes. The electrodes are the inert conducting rods which are responsible for splitting apart the elements. So the positive cations will move towards the negative cathode because opposites attract. And likewise, the negative anions will move towards the positive anode because opposites attract. When they get there, they will be discharged. In other words, they stop being charged and become neutral once more. And this happens by electrons being given and received between the ions and the electrodes. In order for this to happen, the positive cations will gain some negative electrons. In other words, they are going to be reduced. The anions, meanwhile, will transfer their extra electrons to the anode, which means that they lose electrons, and so we say that they are oxidised. Half equations are a special type of equation that help you to understand what's happening in a chemical process in terms of the electrons. These are often redox processes made up of reduction and oxidation. To help you remember which one is which, you can use oil rig. So oil rig tells us that oxidation is the loss of electrons, whereas reduction is the gain of electrons. Oxidation, with an A, happens at the anode, whereas reduction, with a C, happens at the cathode. For each one of these ions that's discharged, you need to be able to write something called a half equation. This is a type of chemical equation which shows us what has happened to one particular species. That means one particular element, as it switches between an ion and either an atom or a molecule. Now for cations, this is really quite straightforward because with one exception, they're going to be turning into atoms and this makes our life a lot easier. So I know that the end point of my equation is going to be that this iron ion turns into an iron atom. Now, how did it get there? I know that with equations, the two sides of the equation need to balance. So here it's the charges that need to balance. I've got three positives on the left and I don't have any positives on the right. So I need something to balance this out. And with half equations, the only thing I have the option of adding is electrons. So since there are three positives here, I'm going to need to balance them out with three negative electrons here. Now this equation is balanced and I can leave it alone. For barium, I'm going to do the same thing. I know that at the end of the day, I'm going to be left with a barium atom, which doesn't have any charge of its own. So the two positives that I see here need balancing out by adding two electrons. Hopefully that makes sense to you and you can pause the video and do the last three on your own. So at the end of my potassium equation, I'm going to be left with potassium atoms and therefore this one positive charge needs balancing out with a single negative electron. Calcium has a two plus charge on its iron, so it will need two electrons to balance it out to make a calcium atom. And then vanadium with a three plus charge is going to need three electrons to make a vanadium atom.
For electrolysis, it's almost always easier to write discharge half equations for cations than anions, but there is one example that is a little bit trickier. We start out in exactly the same way, because we know that at the end of our half equation, we're going to have uncharged hydrogen. And we can look at the charge on the hydrogen ion and see that we need to add a single electron in order to make the charges balance. However, this suggests that hydrogen goes around as individual atoms, and we know that that's not the case. It actually exists as diatomic molecules, each of which contains two atoms of hydrogen. And so on this side of the equation, I need to write H2 to reflect this. But this now means that my equation isn't balanced anymore. I've got two hydrogen atoms over here and only one ion to form them from, and that's no good. So to balance my equation, I need to add a coefficient at the front to say I'm going to need two hydrogen ions. And because there are two of them, they're each going to need one electron to balance them out, so we're going to need two electrons in total. And that's my completed half equation for hydrogen. Writing a half equation for hydrogen is actually a pretty good warm-up for writing equations for anions, because all of the anions we'll discharge at GCSE are going to form molecules. So in just the same way that I did with hydrogen, I need to have over here a chlorine molecule, because that's the form that chlorine exists in. And if I'm going to have a chlorine molecule over here with two chlorines, then that means that I'm going to need two chloride ions. Now, the next bit is a little bit tricky until you get your head around it, but it does make sense, really. So the convention here is that you only ever write plus electrons. You never write minus electrons. Now, there are some examples that will let you get away with it at GCSE, but if you're going to go on to A-level, then it won't be allowed, and frankly, I think you should learn it correctly in the first place. So we somehow need to balance this first equation using plus electrons only. So at the moment, over on the left-hand side, I've got two negatives, because each ion has a single negative charge, and there's two of them. And then over here, we're just neutral. And we need to balance this by adding electrons. Well, electrons have got a negative charge, so to make this balance, I'm going to add two of them. If we look at bromine, we're going to do something very, very similar. So bromine, again, exists as diatomic molecules. And so because there's two of them here, I'm going to need two bromide ions to start with. And therefore, I'm going to need two electrons over here. Pause the video and have a go at the last three. Number five is quite tricky. So for question three and question four, we're going to follow exactly the same process as the previous two. In fact, these are all pretty much identical because these are all species from group seven. Now, the last one is a little bit tricky. So oxygen also forms diatomic molecules, and therefore we also need two over here. However, when I start adding up all of these negative charges, each ion has two negative charges, and there are two of them. So that means that in total, I have four negative charges. So over here, I'm going to need four negative electrons. How did you get on? Now, if you've finished studying electrolysis, you should have completed the electrolysis required practical. And as part of this, you need to look at the electrolysis of substances that have been dissolved to make solutions. And you need to make predictions about which ions are going to be discharged and therefore which products are going to be made. We're not going to go through this in detail here, but the important thing is that if you have a particularly reactive metal, then rather than that reactive metal being discharged, what happens instead is that the hydroxide ions from the water get discharged. So we also need to look at how we write a half equation for hydroxide ions. The half equation for the discharge of hydroxide ions is definitely the most challenging of the ones you meet at GCSE, and I would strongly recommend that you write it on a flashcard and memorise it, rather than trying to work it out from first principles when you're stressed in an exam. But we may as well have a quick look at where it comes from. When hydroxide ions discharge, they produce two products. We see bubbles of oxygen gas, and as we've said, this is a diatomic molecule, so it needs to be written as O2. And then also we have some water molecules. Now, if you think about the hydroxide ion, it contains one oxygen for every one hydrogen. They're in a one-to-one -one ratio. But if I look at the water molecule, then I have two hydrogens and only one oxygen. I couldn't just make water molecules from hydroxide ions because there's some oxygen missing. It needs to go somewhere. And that's why we're producing the oxygen molecules as well. But if I just had 
one um, water molecule being made from two hydroxide ions, then I'd only have one atom of oxygen left over to go over here. And so I wouldn't be able to make a whole oxygen molecule. So in order to make a whole oxygen molecule, I'm going to need two water molecules. And so that's going to give me four hydrogens and two oxygens, and then the other two oxygens go over here. So in order to have these four hydrogen atoms that I need, I'm going to need four hydroxide ions. Now we need to make these charges balance. So this hydroxide ion has a single negative charge, and I've now said that there are four of them. So in order to balance out the four negative charges on the left of my equation, I'm also going to add in four negative electrons on the right hand side of my equation. Hopefully that made sense, but the most important thing is that you memorise this half equation. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this a useful tutorial for GCSE half equations. Don't forget to also check out my full length video going through all the different parts of electrolysis. And if you found this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry content coming soon.